<laughs> make something happen around here. Yeah, it's just for This is the doghouse. Uh, it's a factory style doghouse made of fiberglass. We line X it to match the interior. We are going to be cutting the board. So we're going to lay this in place, roll the chassis in, and I believe we cut essentially right here, but I'm not 100% sure until we get the body in place. Output shaft here for the speedometer. It's a digital signal that it puts out. Then all you have to do is hook in power ground then put this on your uh, on your instrument panel ground yep on the on the gauge and then the other ones on the body okay and then what do we got over here this mess of wires oh boy where do we start <laughs> okay so you got your regular red and black power right here these are your main power these have to be run directly to 12 volts so that's going to go to our, fuse, our Orion 70 amp fuse block. Yeah, so this is always hot. And then you also get a 12 volt switch, which is your remote wire. We're going to run that to the so alternator. Ignition the... source, yeah. yeah. So this comes on when you turn on the ignition, then that's going to give us our remote signal. Okay. And then we've already installed our throttle position module because this obviously doesn't have a plug-in. Yeah, we did a custom, I showed you guys that earlier. Custom bracket for it. Yeah, and then it plugs in directly to the harness. You got the module here, we got a mount still. And that's the body. Yeah. What other signals do we need? We're going to take the uh, well, we RPM from the, from the crank position yeah. sensor. Yeah. And they give you a box. They give you a, a module here for your tack. And all it is, is you got a signal wire here, and all that feeds into the box, and then you got the ground, and then you, the the only other thing it has a like a tap, so you can you can run uh, that signal to something else like a ignition system or something in a gasoline. You got a gasoline engine. And, Pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, and the other stuff we already had hooked up back here is the. We got the main harness connector body there. That's the uh, the trans connector, and then we had the speed sensor. yeah. This is for the output shaft speed. Yeah. And that's really it. Yeah. Might make a little harness. Help to take the drive shaft out. There you go, tech tip of the day. Yeah. All right, we got a little snag here. This is the disc for the emergency brake from way back when because this chassis has been converted a couple times. And it goes to the rear differential back there. We could get it CNC cut out or laser cut, or we're going to swap out the housing, which is probably the best alternative. Yeah, this is going to have clearance back there. Right now, this disc is going to hit. If it was in place, be, just, oh, we could just cut a hole in the gas tank and let it roll in it. Yeah, we could do that. And we'll put a little gasket. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is, is that there can't, the way that that flange is set up on the diff, you yeah. can't, can't install the drive shaft without this disc. Because it has a space. It takes, yeah, yeah, there's a lip. It sits inside. So we'll swap lip. it out to this and we should be fine. So this is what we're gonna put on there so that we have clearance without that old school brake setup. We also had to shim the uh, mount in place so that it'll work. I mean, what I'm, what I'm, this will be fine. But what I'm talking about is the, is it sitting down on the, yeah. there's the, the U-joint spacing. This should be good. You got the slip joint as long as it's not less. Oh yeah, we're good. 
Yeah, that should be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. still have plenty of room. Yeah. Alright, so we've modified the air box. Now we've got free flow, so this is all cut perfectly. And when I put that in, we're getting free flow coming through. All right, so we've upgraded this assembly right here. We got rid of that old school disc mount. We had to cut the uh, mounting spot just because of this new tank. And then uh, everything clears fine. So once we tighten this up, it's gonna pull it closer and we're not gonna be on this drive shaft. Yeah, so now we're basically working on the boring little piddly stuff. So like, we put the uh, coolant tank on there. Had to get all the good hose clamps and make sure all our hoses were good. We put the heater, the heater control valve back in and all those, the heater tubes hooked those up. Uh, we ran the, I'll show you in a minute underneath, we ran the fuel line. But we hooked up the throttle cable here. You hooked um, up the power steering. Yeah, I because it the, sprayed, looks like it sprayed about 15 feet. It just happens, you know. Uh, I got the power steering stuff, like you said, I got the power steering, the fan clutch. I got the master cylinder and the, the booster all hooked back up. All new clamps, got all new pedal, hoses. Pedal inside, all that hooked back up. What's all this? That's our uh, a nest. We're building a nest for little birdies that we're going to put in here. <laughs> you want to show me what you did underneath? This is what we're dealing with. We got this, we got the wire that runs across here. This is the only one that was originally here. Then we got, this is my, this is one wire. This is my, uh, my fuel pump hot wire. It's gonna run to the generator. Okay. Because there's a, uh, a good uh, ignition switched source on there for 24 volt. And we got all our other stuff that goes. So how much did you have to actually cut off the tunnel? It looks like very minimal. No, I didn't cut anything off this side. Just really? off that, just off the outer edge over there, around the uh, tranny dipstick. Yeah, around the dipstick and around the uh, exhaust there. That's what I mean. You can really you can't, can't even, even tell. tell. Yeah. Once I move this, you got. It's gonna yeah. look like Publix when we're done. Publix is our shopping center here. <laughs> Kroger, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You get a nice view from back here too. Look at that turbo. Nice. Must have WD-40 that thing. Actually, it's dirty right now. We got all the dust and stuff from me cutting and everything. Wait till we clean it up good. It's gonna be nice. I gotta get this old uh, speedo cable out of here, and because we're doing a digital speedo, yeah, that's gonna be easy. Yeah. Out of a lot of this stuff, I got this. This is your. Uh, this is the supply hose. I did that the other day. Okay. And this is going to be your return. So the return I ran, I was going to run it here, but it's a little closer. When you run it, it's going to be closed. Put the camera right, right here. Oh, we got to still get that piece for it. But rawr, 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 rawr. Yeah, it's going to sound just like that. Sure. Got the. Uh, you putting tranny fluid in the engine? Power room? steering in there. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> it's oil in case the haters are thinking it's not. It's O-R-A-L. No India. So here's the original shifter from the truck. Seen better days. Show them that four-speed shifter. Give a little presentation. And then Jake is modifying the shift rod, the shift rod so that it'll fit right in there. All right, so the motor's in there looking good we're gonna do our first uh, start he's putting that fuel we just primed the fuel pump we primed the fuel filter and then um, we broke an injector line loose and let the fuel come out this is gonna be the first real start before we're just cranking it so there's a waste of time to show you that here's all the wire we're gonna cut to make a little clean that's for the shifting module and the transmission module let's try this thing out Here the fuel pump. Wait, light works, so the ECU is working like it's supposed to. There we go. You ready? <laughs> Sounds 
good. cover on here I would uh, probably venture to say we should oh you can adjust it here never mind well, what do you can explain it yeah you can explain it. here's the thing right now it's not it's not cracking it open at all the, the way it's adjusted so I think once we operate it and drive it in any way we can still adjust the screw yeah. right there from out there yeah If, if we have it adjusted where it's at and it's still not cracking it open, then and the, what you're gonna do is watch the gauge. And if, gauge. if it's, yeah. If, you're, if your boost is getting up too high, like you already said you wanted, what, uh, 10 pounds? 12 pounds. 12 pounds. So if your boost starts to go above 12 pounds, then we'll need to adjust it and we'll open the wastegate. But from what I'm seeing right now, it doesn't look like it's putting out a whole lot of uh, Okay. <laughs> Eat shield. And take the, uh, had to get the uh, oil pressure gauge working in the, yeah. and the speedometer got to take out. Yep. Put the new one in. You got a good one. So we've mounted the Easy TCU module up here. We put a rubber gasket underneath it. Uh, you've got your throttle position sensor, which runs up there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get it running, and then we'll get rid of all the wires we don't really need. Right now, it's getting there in regards to neatness. We've already installed the is it 85 miles per hour the speedometer. I think so. 80. Uh, 80 mile per hour speedometer looks great with the contrast of green and black. Yep. And. Uh, it's getting close.